Midas Manor, Mike. Midas Manor. I'm not sure what you own, but this here is on the mark Like a spiral from a five-star recruit, we throwing darts Really focused, WD-40 couldn't stop the way we grinded In the trenches, putting that work in, I relate to all my linemen This is for the men, the boys do not belong here Tiptoeing to the top, we doing cone drills The hottest show in the world, you don't even gotta search Steady putting in work, you see the sweat up on my shirt They wasn't aware of us at first we wasn't on they radar. Now every play that we make, they gon' say all. Oh, similar to a razor blade, we gon' stay sharp. The news ain't official if it's not on the mark. Do we up? It's Wednesday, the On Your Mark Show, powered and sponsored by Epic Sports Repair. Every play, I compete live from Fishbowl Radio Studios, Bedford, Texas. Here to educate and elevate you again on Wednesday. You know this is what we do. Got my guy, Coach Butler, in the building, man. He's he's family, man. You know He's been on the show before. Got some new things going on. We're going to talk about that as well. And of course, my guy, Coach Jay, in the building, Coach to Coach Athletics, Epic Sports Repair CEO. Coach Jay, what it do? Man, what it do? Always happy to be on the show, man. Love it, love it. Absolutely. Coach Butler, man, listen, man, this is my guy. You know what I'm saying? I bumped into him a few weeks ago. Uh, you know, we had this already planned. He's got some new things he wants to talk about today. Uh, but, Coach, I always like to start with guests for the listeners who hadn't uh, seen or talked to you before. Just kind of give us your background and how you got into uh, coaching and training where you are now. Okay. Hey, first of all, uh, Mark, I appreciate you. Um, inviting me and having me on the show again. Uh, definitely honor, pleasure. Um, my name is Coach Butler. I am uh, a 20-year vet. Uh, did, I was in the Army for 20 years, uh, retired in 2020. Have a family of four. Been training athletes for about 13 years. Um, I love training, sports performance, right? I love what it does as far as the mindset. Uh, getting the kids where they need to be, where they get into college, but at the same time, that same mindset, they're going to take it to everything else they do, right? Um, I love it as far as the, the relationship you build because when you can break somebody down and build them right back up, you build a great relationship, and it's like a relationship for life. So um, I have a new training facility that I just opened up on March 1st. Uh, it's in Alvarado. Most time people think about Alvarado, like, man, way is way in the boonies. But uh, it's about six miles from the field house, from the field of dreams, on the back skirts of uh, Mansfield. Um, and so uh, it's a sports performance facility. Uh, it's training athletes on speed, strength, performance. And when I say performance, I'm talking about the mindset, right? And so mindset plays a, a crucial role to developing these youth athletes to get to where you need to be. I uh, train from young all the way to old. I got some um, – um, I got – Baseball players, base, uh, football players, track athletes. Uh, I mean, we're training the MMA guy, working on some speed, strength, um, just getting him where he need to be so he can be able to go out there and hopefully one day compete in the UFC. Uh, just open up a lot of different um, uh, skill sets within just getting these youth and these um, um, athletes where they need to be. I also have a Saturday training that uh, I'm hoping one day I'll see Mark out there one day. Uh, it's called Connect, where I'm doing it with men, just bringing men together to go out there and grind. We go out there and we, we get a good workout. Uh, we socialize amongst each other afterwards, but before that, we get the grind on. We get a little conversation on the forehead, right? And just getting, just grouping men together, no matter the age, right? My dad's 73, and he was still out there getting, getting his grind on. So we got people from 20 years old all the way to 50s and 60s, but we go out there and meet you where you are. Teach a lot of different things, keeping us men in the game uh, so that we can be the, the husbands and fathers and mentors that we need to be, right? And we have that energy, but we're connecting amongst each other. So that's a little bit about me. We're finna lump some. Absolutely. When you, the mentality part of it, that's the thing I really want to dive into today. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we were talking, you know, before we started, and Coach Jay, we talk about these type of things all the time. The mental aspect of going into – Put yourself in position to be elite, to su be successful. You have to have some background and get into work. You have to grind. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Coach Jay, we talk about these things all the time. Uh, I'm going to come to you first. The mentality that you have to have when you're working on yourself before you get to the field. You know, Coach Jay, just shed some light on that just a little bit. Well, it's it, 
<clears throat> always that, that thing of how bad I want it and what what is uh, what's my point for doing it and am I doing it for you know myself for the future for my family you know just all of those things help build that mindset of I'm never going to quit I'm, I'm doing it for a reason I have to get up I have to go do it and continue to put that work in so mindset is, is extremely important in whatever we do mark um it, it it's important for longevity because we all face challenges but the mindset is what's going to keep us going and, and push through if that makes sense absolutely now now coach i know you're heavy on this we talk about these kind of things all the time in passing uh how do you get these uh, you know we'll start with the youth because that's the impactful type thing mm -hmm. to me uh, the mindset, how do you try to get those guys in gear? Because, you know, sometimes, you know, you get up early, you know, teenagers want to sleep in. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if you, wait, if you wait for so long, you lose hours in the day. Right. So talk about that just a little bit. Well, before I answer that question, I'm going to caveat on something that uh, Coach J, Mr. SD, the legend himself, had mentioned. Well, one thing, he helped me out, right? And and this one thing that um, it's always about, that we talked about it before we came online, it's all about the company you keep and the person that around you. Me and, me and SD have created a great relationship. And I'll never forget one day, and I, usually I'm the one that's talking people up, and one day he had to tell me on the phone. He said, man, you gonna stay on the porch or jump off the porch? Because I was in a mindset where I wanted to start my facility, but I was, I was, it was different, right? I did 20 years in the military, I came in at 17, been training athletes for years, but, but to say I'm finna leave my nine to five, because at that time I was a JRTC instructor, to say I'm gonna leave my nine to five, which is, you know, really military oriented, something I knew for years, and then go out there and start a business. And I was I was a little scared, right? I was like, man, I gotta take care of the family, I gotta do this. And Coach Jay say, hey, look, what you gonna do? You gotta do this for your family. But you're gonna stay on the porch or jump out. But either way it go. You know what I'm saying? You can't stay on the porch and be still talking about it, right? And and so enough. That word, it hit me hard. And I told him, man, it hit me hard because, like, man, usually I'm the one that's saying jump out the porch, right? Absolutely. And so, um, and, and so enough, after we had that phone call, say a couple, maybe a week or two later, I went on to sign a deal and made the deal and, uh, and haven't looked back. And I appreciate him for that, uh, for just giving me some word of wisdom because I knew it was coming in a, a, a great space. So now with that said, as far as your question, the mindset is so key to help you get to where you need to be. You know, I got some athletes that we start at 5 a.m. training, right? You're like, man, why you do 5 a.m., 5 a.m.? Especially if you're a junior, senior, or you're trying to get looked at, right? Once you get to college. That's the time. That's the time. <laughs> so why why start when you get there? Right. You start now. Right. When, I, when I was getting ready to exit out the military, right, I couldn't start my resume when I got out. I had to start my resume we got this thing called SFL Tap. We had to start two years prior. Start out, start making small adjustments to get us where we need to be, so I can get in the in the realm of the civilian life, right? Right. So the mindset is key, but the mindset it starts with you. This morning, my baby boy got me up this morning, at 5 a.m. was out there running, right? Now, granted, he's at all four. He's the one that's like he ain't trying to get up in the morning trying to do nothing. But all of a sudden, he has. He has accountability part. He's 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 helping one of his buddies out at school. They have a health project, and now he's like, I chose to do the 5 a.m. training. So guess what? I got out there, and I got out there with him, right? That mindset. But now, within these last two days, I've seen a different mindset from my son, right? Before, it was like, man, 830, he's dragging. I'm, he's dragging. He's barely ready to get to, ready for school. Now, he got up, grinding at 530 in the morning. He took his shower. We did everything. By 8.10 this morning, he was like, Dad, I'm, I'm waiting on you. Yeah. And I'm over here like, man, well, we got a good workout this morning. Right. And But I told him, I said, man, that right there, it don't matter how much you grind, if you don't have a mindset, and another thing is believe in what you're doing, right, it's nothing going to change, right? You're just going through, you're just spinning the wheels. Mm -hmm. And so that mindset will help that performance. That's why those three things within my B3 um, um, athlete training is the speed, the strength, but better yet, 
the performance, which is that mindset piece that's going to help you get to where you need to be. Now, you mentioned B3 Athlete. Talk about that a little bit. Uh, this is something that you established you know, a while back. Mm -hmm. I think that says a lot, speed, strength, and performance training. Mm -hmm. You have to have the speed and the strength, but the performance – when you get done with all of those things, that's the pinnacle. That's the peak. That's what you see at the mm -hmm. end result. Mm -hmm. But speak on B three a little bit and what you kind of what was the genesis of getting that started? Okay, so um, throughout the years, like I said, I've been training, um, especially while I was in the military. I had a youth track program called Beast Mode that stemmed from out of Houston. Um, but I was in Kentucky. I was in uh, the Fort Knox area. That's where I did my last seven years in the military. Um, I was training and training athletes within the track, football rim. I got a lot of athletes within that football that went to college. Uh, some of them should be coming out in the draft hopefully next year. Um, but but I always had a great job of building relationships, right? But, you know, relationships, you know, can come and go at times, right? So, you know, throughout the years, you know, you're helping people, you're consulting people, you're doing these things now for other people facilities. And at the, at the same time, you had to – abide by the culture that they had right within the facility whether it was that the gym or the school or whatever it might be so as i got to texas like man i want to have i want to create my own culture right i want to have my own facility i don't have to ask nobody to come use my facility right and so um that was the next step that was the next step to allow me to do the things that i'm doing right now whether i'm doing character building training within my facility whether I'm doing sports performance training within the facility, whether we just having a meeting in the facility, whether we just had, let's like, say, hey, let's get in here and let's break some bed in the back room, and then we come over here and watch TV within the big screen, right? Or we going out there and me and the connecting, or um, uh, um, or spouses and that, or, you know, you're, you're connecting. We go out there and work out. I can create my own culture within my facility. So that was the, kind of the genesis of why I want to start it my own piece, and then build it from there well I, I think you know speed performance and training all go hand in hand but you know you can't have one without the it's kind of like butter and bread on both sides you know mm -hmm. butter and toast mm -hmm. you can't have one in, without the other when you introduce these concepts to your athlete you're just getting them how do you start and you have to express this to the parents and families as well because a mm -hmm. lot of times you know we're in the uh the type of industry uh you know everybody wants results right away mm -hmm. Speak on how you try to translate that, you know, build this program up. You know, when you're starting with youth, you want to see them develop. You don't want to see them peak too early. Mm -hmm. Just speak on that a little bit. So the first thing um, I like to do is be able to assess the athletes, right? Get a, a proper assessment. And assessment can come where it can come formal or informal. Informal is like I'm walking, as an athlete's walking in the facility, or I have a chance to interact with that athlete, whether it's at the school, in the stands, I'm looking at the way they walk, the way they move, kind right. of, you know, are they leaning more to the right, more to the left? Those are small assessments, right? Right, right. Then you start getting them into the gym and you start assessing them, right? Right. Um, and then figuring out what their goals. What What are you doing? What are you trying to get to? Where are you at and where are you trying to get? So if I want to be a, I want to be a baseball athlete, I'm a baseball athlete, but at the same time I'm tight within the hips, I have no rotational power, things of that nature. So those are things we're assessing within the facility. And then let's figure out what your goals, right? And make your goals your goals, not somebody else's goals. I was talking to an athlete last night, and it was they were um, comparing themselves to other athletes, right? Like I feel like, coach, I feel like I should be better than where I'm at, where I am right now. But they also didn't see the bigger picture, right? What do your progressions look like, right? Because right? your progressions might have come a lot further than the other person's progress. That's the first thing. And then on a holistic standpoint, right? And that's the beauty of building that relationship through training. On a holistic standpoint, this athlete that was talking to me has so many other attributes within a entrepreneur spirit that's already doing, along with just uh, 4.0, 3.9 GPA, um, high caliber athlete. These are things, so it's kind of hard to compare. Okay, this person might be doing better, or these people – but what did they come with in the holistic piece? Because when you start getting recruited, and SD will tell you best, that they want to see that holistic piece. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. They want to see how how are you, how do you, what's your character look like when you're dealing with your parents? Right. right? I think the coach from um, UConn was just talking about, they're talking about, hey, we, we, we want to look at the interaction between the parents. 
Because if you respect the parents, then you're going to respect what I got going on. Right. Now I can put as much pressure on it as, as possible to get you where you need to be. And so those are things that, that we're looking for and I'm trying to assess to see where these kids at, be able to write the things down. Another thing I like to do every week, right, I'll have on my whiteboard that I'll write down a um, motivational thought, uh, encouraging thought for the week, and that's what we live on. So this week is expectations, right? So I start off on Sunday, and we'll talk about it later on. I started a, a, a 14U 707 group, right? And first thing on Sunday, we come out and we say, hey, look, um, these, this is the model for the week. This is what I want y'all to build up on. Right. And we talked about it this past Sunday. What are your expectations? Because it's so easy for us to have expectations for somebody else, right? But what are expectations of ourselves? Absolutely. Right? So if you can expect... 100% from yourself, then you can maybe expect 100% from somebody else. Right. But at the same time, you got to lead by what? Example. Example. Right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Not by what you say. So for I was telling you before we came on air, I said, man, I'm exhausted right now because, you know, I ran today, but I haven't ate since like 5 o'clock last night because uh, I'm doing like a small intermediate fasting. Right? And I plan on doing, uh, my coach talked me into, I'm doing a little jiu-jitsu tournament on the 8th of June. Right, in Lubbock. So I take my son to Texas Tech for a camp on the ninth, and I'll do a you know, jiu-jitsu camp. But I've been talking about it for years, but I wanted to stretch the limits because it was 20 years I've been pushing towards something, right? And I also wanted to show my athletes to say, hey, look, and my kids, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put pressure on myself, wake up early in the morning, commit to the grind, stay mentally and physically strong, Right, challenge myself because I love eating. By this time, I've ate about two, three meals already. Right, <laughs> and so now I'm just, I'm just trying to survive on some, some, uh, some uh, elderberry tea right now. And right. so, uh, but at the same time, my kids and my athletes can see that hey, coach, coach is, is putting himself through the same thing that he's he's encouraging me and pushing me to do. Absolutely. Right, and so now they can see that grind. And that, so my now my goal is to by eight June. Is go out there and do what I got to do, right? Um, and to 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 fall in love with this process that I'm right. going through right now, right. right? And those are things that we try to make sure as trainers that we're in that space to be able to say, "Hey, look, fall in love with the process," right? Whether you go to, you might get to college. Hopefully, get to college. That's if that's what God's goal is for you. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, that process is going to help you with everything else. You said it earlier, right? Mm -hmm. You you play ball growing up. It's those that, that same attributes that help you, that discipline, okay, that hard work, that grit. Those are things that we – that's our attributes for uh, my 707 group, right. right? Are you coachable? Are you disciplined? Do you right. have that grit? Those same things will not just help you be successful in football, not just help you be successful within your training. It's also going to help you be successful in life. Right, so and those are things that helped me do my 20 years and, and retire at a pretty high level uh, and still have my good sanity to be able to move around, you know what right. I mean, in my right. 40s. Absolutely. Now, Coach Jay, you know, we, we, we talk about these type of things all the time and, and you know, been work, uh, working with you in the past, uh, on the field with you in the past, we can look at these type of things and kind of see – what an athlete may or, or may perform like just off that first assessment. This is something that you – when you're in a training mode that you kind of assess, uh, you know, that you kind of look at, you look at his ankles, you look from the waist up. Everything starts from the ground up when it comes to any sport, any type of training. Just speak on that a little bit and how you try to get that across, uh, you know, when uh, kids and parents come into your program. Well, first thing is just understanding that, again, like you said, everything starts from, from the ground up. If you don't have a base, if you don't have strong ankles, strong feet, um, nothing else matters because being fast, you know, you, you have to have that foundation. The first thing, touch the ground, feet, ankles, shins, all of that. So those are, are, are things that's very important. And I, I think we, <clears throat> as a whole, a lot of times we sacrifice greatness right now for, um, you know, long-term success. And, and going the long way. Sometimes we, we have to take our time. And, and prime example of that is if you look at a lot of kids that are running amazingly fast times in high school, 
they don't get faster when they get to college and beyond Mm -hmm. because a lot of them, that window closes very early because they've reached that capacity very early versus, you know, wanting to slow roll it and and, and have a well-rounded body of work and then get faster later when it counts. So a lot of those guys that, that win Olympics weren't winning in high school, weren't winning in, in college, but they kept getting better little by little and, and, and building building that foundation. Mm-hmm. So I looked at that many years ago and said, okay, well, that needs to be my, my, my training method of making sure that my kids and the kids that I train are, you know, well-rounded for the long term versus trying to max them out early. So that's just, you know, the the approach that I think worked uh, and, and works for the kids that, that I have. We're we going to take what God gave you and then add a little bit to where you get to where you want to go and still have some gas left in the tank. Well, you don't want them to peak early, and that's the thing that you want, you know, and, and the development piece is there. You know, a lot of times, uh, you know, we have access to, uh, you know, camps, 707, uh, you know, the high school season when it's going on and we get to see these things up close and and, and personally in the dirt in the mm-hmm. in the mud with it and you can tell the difference between someone that's kind of gradually and then you can also tell when they they've kind of peaked mm-hmm. you know what i mean it, it, it's levels to this and everything that you do it's levels to it but you have to start early you know in in a scouting realm early identification now is the best thing that you can have for your athlete the earlier you get them identified the more eyes that you can get on them, the more exposure that to, that you can get on your athlete at an early age benefits them down the line. You know, we could take – listen, we'll take the NFL draft. Caleb Williams was identified very early as a top athlete, as a top quarterback in the country way before he got to Oklahoma, way before he got to USC, and now he's a first-round draft pick. But, you know, in listening to his story and listening to him talk, he and his father, they came up when when he when his, he told his father. I think he said he was around nine or ten. When he told him what he wanted to do, they set up a plan right then and there, and the the reaps the, they reaped the benefit of him being the first round pick. Now, mm-hmm. but it took sacrifice. It took some t- some days, like you said, coach, of getting up at four or five in the morning, getting that grind, doing it, staying focused, staying disciplined in order to get that. Everybody wants to get that ultimate result and being that first-round pick. But what do you have to do to get a first-round, to be a first-round pick? Mm -hmm. You know, you don't just wake up. There's some dogs that just wake up with that. (laughs) I call it wake up out of bed with it. Mm -hmm. But there's also some dogs that are earned in the trenches in the mud. Mm -hmm. And you have to know the difference, you know, with your as we're talking off, off camera before we started, you know, you have to know from a parent's perspective. I flip the switch. You have to know what your athlete wants. You know, it's it's it, the older they get, they may transition into different aspects of not wanting to do it. Mm-hmm. But you have to know that early, as as you just be kind of wasting your money and wasting your time. You know what I mean? And that's a conversation that parents and families and athletes have to have. And you have to look yourself in the mirror, Coach Jay. We talk about these type of thing, type of things all the time. Being accountable. And then, you know, having that leverage of having someone in your corner that knows these type of things, you know, even in the recruiting game. Now it's turning to a thing where you have to kind of have some guidance with this thing. The transfer portal calls yesterday. There's a lot of guys that didn't get, uh, you know, a, a next opportunity that are still waiting. You know what I mean? That, that, that got pushed out. But that's a whole nother show. Uh, transfer portal, which we're gonna be, we're working on that, and I'll let y'all know when that happens. But uh, shifting back uh, to Coach Bus- Butler, you talked about starting the seven on seven team, mm-hmm. and uh, you know I bumped into you a couple weeks ago, and you, and you, you know, I saw the excitement. Uh, you know, you've had some of your players coaching uh, the younger age groups. Mm-hmm. Tell me what the genesis was of that, because that's not something that's very, very easy to do, uh, and, and you know, trying to get uh, families and players together. You know, we we have a chance to do this around the country. Uh, every year uh, with 707. So I kind of understand the process. And I've had 707 uh, teams in the past when I was coaching. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I know how difficult it is uh, to get an organization going, uh, to get athletes prepared, to get families prepared to go out and perform. But tell mm-hmm. me about that and just what did you see and why was it a need to get these athletes that you already have you know, access to uh, on the 707 field? Uh, well, 
First, it was um, my younger son uh, and his, um, I would say his middle school mafia that was like, Coach Butler, can you start 707, right? And and we always say, um, we always want to put ourselves, I want to put myself in a position to be able to help change and keep these kids busy and put them in a safe space, you know, to go out there and do what they got to do, right? Because if they're not doing something that they put their mind to, somebody else going to find something for it. So when they, when they was, you know, very excited about starting a 707, along with the fact that majority of my 95% of maybe like one is like my little cousin, but um, they all going to go to the same school. They all going to feed to the same high school. So just to get these kids, it wasn't no tryouts. It was just taking his youth, it was in the middle school, taking them together, and we brought some other coaches um, together to be able to pour into it and get them educated on their positions, understanding the, the, you know, the game of football, um, working on some speed and agility, uh, creating that camaraderie, a lot of, and then you know also um, pushing those attributes within the discipline, the grind, right, within the sport, right. And then another thing is, I was able to take my son and a couple other high school athletes who are at the same school that they're going to go to. Right and allow them to be my offensive coordinator, my defensive coordinator, and my um, assistant coach. So now they can work on their mentorship. They can mentor down right, and to these middle school athletes. And so the goal is to be able to every year, the kids that play, now they're going to be mentoring down. And now you almost have a feeder program, and you're building building uh, camaraderie amongst each other, right? Um, and those kids are understanding the game and they're building it and they're growing up together. And so that was kind of the thing that kind of led me because it wasn't the right time. It was one of those things I was like, man, it'd be great to start 707. But, you know, I was thinking about like some years now. Absolutely. Right? It, wasn't, it wasn't like now because I was trying to learn the business piece and all the other stuff with, you know, just trying to – still trying to get out of, out of military mode into civilian mode, right? And so um, – but it's, it's been great. Uh, it's been a great ride. I, I want to say we've been going hard for about five weeks. We was able to uh, compete in uh, uh, the prospects SD uh, at, at tournament, which was an outstanding tournament. It was the first tournament in Waxahachie, and now we'll be competing this upcoming weekend. And so uh, the kids are looking forward to it. Our team, our team is called the Soldiers, right? Uh, Soldiers with a three. I love, it's something about that three that I just love, right? Absolutely. And so, uh, but like I say, like I said earlier, it means grit. Uh, discipline and are you coachable, right? And those are the th- three things that I talk to the parents about, talk to the, the athletes about. Those are things we're going to stand on, right? And the goal is to build and build in every practice, every game, we're getting 1% better, Absolutely. right? And the goal is to be for them to be able to see uh, within the next month or two to see the difference between they was day one, right? right? And build up and understand hey, look, this was 7074. Let's go out there, grind, work together as a team, and then when they start getting into the summer and they're all going out to the high school, they have just as much of a connection, right. right? So now those 15 athletes are now going to the high school and they're going to gravitate and get 15 more. Now Absolutely. you got 30, right, Absolutely. with the same mindset, right? And then now they're able to come back next spring and mentor down to the next upcoming 7th and 8th grade group. So that's the reason why I wanted to just play an impact uh, right. impact and, and I said I had some other great coaches around me that had the same mindset same value system of what they wanted to do with the youth and, and I say we the, the sky's the limits right, right. The sky's the limits as far as what's, what's going to happen with these kids absolutely man mm-hmm. we're going to take a moment to kick, kick a couple of shout outs to everybody that's tuning in today everybody that's watching on your mark show we appreciate your support mm-hmm. click like and share this episode because we want to educate and edu- educate and elevate someone out there shout out to coach G Jeffrey Johnson Jesse Phillips uh, Jola Smith, Vicky Henry, share this, man. This is what we're trying to do is help, uh, you know, somebody out there today that may have questions about these type of things. And listen, tap in with Coach Butler, tap in with Coach Jay. You know, these guys have been in the trenches with this for a long time, uh, and they can help your athletes if they're not already getting that help. Mm-hmm. Also, click the link in in the uh, description here, man. Help us keep the show going. Listen, we were voted the number one 
new show on the Fishbowl Radio Network, and we want to keep that going in 2023 and 2024. We're coming for the crown. We're coming for everybody <laughs> on the network, man. Shout out to everybody. Lots of shows on the Fishbowl Radio Network. Check them out each week. But, uh, you know, Coach, when you saw this, uh, back to the 707 uh, uh, question, a lot of times there's a need, you know, mm-hmm. and you're, you have privy or have a chance to see these guys. How did you figure that they needed this extra, you know, work? How did you go about seeing that they needed, you know, some fundamental work, some speed work you mentioned? Mm-hmm. But, you know, in, in a highly competitive, you know, at, at uh, you know, Coach Jay's tournament, Prospect 7 on 7, shout out to those guys as well. Great tournament at Waxhatchee. But you want them to be able to experience live bullets, live fire. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a big thing, you know, with 7 on 7 that you get for the skill positions. Mm-hmm. You get a chance to work on those things right in a game type situation. So speak on that just a little bit. But one thing I've seen with some of those athletes, they were, um, they might have went through their middle school career um, and they're about to get into high school, and that's a that's a big transitional time period, right? Whether it's in the sports realm or just in the mindset, right? right. They're trying to figure out what they want to do. But I've seen a lot of those kids were in positions on the football field that they probably had no business of being in. Right. They might not have been the best athlete, right? Um, and so they was in, you know, they was kind of whatever role or field of role. And so now you get to high school, right? So now this kid who might have played that should be probably playing maybe in the backfield or playing linebacker somewhere, and if you had molded them, mm-hmm. they playing linemen, right? right. And they, they don't have the size for a lineman, right? right? So now they get over to the high school and they realize that everybody play linemen is like 200, 300 plus. Yeah. And they like a buck 05 wet in the ninth grade. Right. And so, but that's that's what they have now tailored themselves to. So now they have a, it's a mindset now. Absolutely. Right? So like, man, do I stay the course, go on to another position and, and just kind of stay the course? And, and like, as he just said, not focus on the now, but focus on the later process. Right. Right? And as a parent, do I support my athlete get them where they need to be to get them where they need to be right, right. so that they won't say i quit right, right? i quit you can't you, why'd you quit i just i just don't want to play no more but really i just feel like i'm i'm I, it's hard for me to catch up right and i wasn't i'm at that middle school sixth grade seventh grade eighth grade time period when i should have been molded mm-hmm. right to be where i kind of need to be or give me a good foundation for high school I wasn't right. right, so I seen those things just by you know coming to some of the games and watching some of my my son and some of my athletes play, and I'm like, man, you know, let's focus on the foundation, get them kids where they need so they have something to build off of, right, right, and then also build a relationship with these youth. If they decide it's not for them in high school, okay, cool, but the relationship is built now. For Coach sure. Butler's always going to be there for no you. No doubt, you know what I mean. No doubt. And so I don't care if you're going to go out there and be next band captain, cool, right? right? Let's take the same mindset. That same grit, that same discipline, that same coachability, it, it happens in everything you do. Right. right. I had to have that same mindset when I became a soldier. Right. right? Or I wasn't gonna make it for. Right. right. I would have did my four and, and done. Right. right. So that's what I seen the need to need be. And now we're creating our own little seeds to build. Right. So that's where we at. Well, uh, you know, transitioning from middle school to high school is definitely a big jump when it comes to athletics and you know, really just uh, mindset, you know, mm-hmm. kids have a lot of things going on not outside of just athletics today. And, uh, you know, if, if you're not well versed or kind of trained in that or have someone that's really uh, feeding into you or, or, you know, putting back into you to, to, to have your back in that, you know, mm-hmm. kids get lost. And that's the reason we see these things happen in society as a whole. Yeah. But, but athletics play a strong part in that right. as well. Uh, uh, Coach Jay, Lines in the fire, being in the mud with it. You know, we, you know, you put on seven on seven, uh, not just now, but you know, you've been doing this for years, and you talk about these things. Uh, you know, people being able to, or kids being able to perform when the lights are on. You know, mm-hmm. this prepares them for that. You know, a lot of times seven on seven is getting a bad rap as far as some of the outside influences, but when you look at the purity of the game and the way it should be played, it's a big help when these kids get back into 11 on 11 and pass to so speak on that just a little bit. No, absolutely. When it comes to, you know, seven on seven, one on one, you know, it, 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 we have to understand that again, it is another tool. If we use it correctly to help kids get better for Friday night, it is not the end all be all, but 
whatever you can do to get extra reps that that mimics as close to the game as possible without putting your kid in in danger of of being hurt or um you know just wear and tear uh seven on seven is is a amazing tool that has shown to help kids get better and understand the speed of the game come Friday night. There are so many kids with higher IQs because they spent so much time playing seven on seven. And again, if it's done correctly. Now, with that being said, we still have to make sure that there's training, that there's rest and, and, and all of those things. So you don't want to push, you know, that by itself. But again, it's a part of the big puzzle which is getting your kids an opportunity to to get those reps to get better that they can potentially transfer that information that's going to help them on Friday night so it it's it's a great tool if you want your kids to get better where they can get an opportunity but there has to be again a, a plan of we have to commit to the excellence of doing this, not doing it to show up, you know, for, for clicks and likes, it's business. Right. You got to go out there and put in work. You have to go and be determined, not just to be on a team, not to be a part of it, but to actually go learn something. And I think that's where the confusion has become because it's starting to become a popularity contest versus development. Right. It's, <laughs> it's more, I want to go have fun versus understanding that if I utilize this, if I actually put in the work, my skill set will improve come the fall. That's the most important thing I believe, you know, that the, the game of seven on seven can give athletes if utilized correctly. Absolutely. And I saw Coach Mike Tomlin of the Steelers, uh, I think he was talking about the draft picks uh, right after the draft, and he spoke highly of that and you can see uh the development of these guys early because they had this type of uh competitive environment when it's done the right way Mm -hmm. um you know it's a tool that helps you get better you know what i mean and for coaches at the nfl level even in the collegiate level uh to give uh you know 707 his props or you know commend these athletes for doing it i think it's a key piece that that that's not that's getting lost sometime with the theatrics that you see off the field or you know within you know within certain uh, you know game footage or whatever that you see, mm-hmm. but that's the lost part of it. The big part of it is you're going to get these guys come back that'll be ready to go. You know what I mean? Now, if it trans, it, it has to translate though. Now, be be careful with. Not all seven on seven is great. It has to translate to Friday nights. Mm-hmm. You know, my coach used to say if you, if it don't uh, work for you, if you're not good at certain shorts, how can you do it in pads? Mm-hmm. You know, everybody looks good in certain shorts, but when it comes to Friday nights, we speak in high school or Saturdays when uh, you go to college, all of that has to translate. It has to be working for you. But getting yourself in that competitive environment, I think, is a key, uh, in, and I think that's why you end up doing it. You know what I mean? And, and and the soldiers aspect of it, I know that has to do with your military background, but speak on that just a little bit because we had a conversation a couple of weeks ago when you were uh, telling me about it on the field that I thought was very important to branding it and sending that message to the guys on the field, what they represent and what they're expected to do when they step in. Right. And so they say with the, the three parties, with that grit, right, um, you had to be able to push through, right? And so – our kids, that was their first tournament, right? And the first first game was rough. You know what I mean? It was on their first tournament, their first scrimmage, their first everything, right? We probably started maybe four weeks before, three weeks before that, right, as far as after, you know, everything went through. And so, um, um, but coming back game two, totally different. Game three was exciting, right? Right, because you see your kids getting better. The Light bulb starts out, to go. Right, it starts to go. You're yeah. like, man. Everything you did in practice, like, okay, now the jitters are out, let's go, right? right? But that grit, you got to fight through. Right. You're going to have some bad days. You're going to have days where you're going to take the, it. What do you do? What do you do? You you can't – everybody don't take W's all the time, right? right. Absolutely. But what do you do when you when you get knocked down, mm-hmm. right? And then that discipline part, discipline starts – it don't start just in practice. It starts in everything you do. Right. From the time you wake up, your mindset, right? Just, you know, one of the things that I always, you know, I would say in the military that, that – that I 
when I retired, I said, oh, man, I'm going to wake up at 9, 10 o'clock, sleep in. Man, it was already ingrained in me to do my early morning, to wake up, to, to wake up, cut the lights on before everybody in the street. You know, I was in competition with everybody on the street. Like, hey, But at the end of the day, I'm in competition with myself to be the very best me. Mm-hmm. But just getting out there and getting me some exercise in, get the mindset right, help me start the day, right? But those disciplines, whether the things you eat, the mindset, uh, even those character pieces, yes sir, no sir, those just those things are the things that separate you, right? And then are you coachable, right? Do you have the ability to listen, right, and, and say, hey, coach, uh, or are you one of those people that know it all, right? And so that's what I want to – put my student athletes, the older student athletes, over the younger ones. And some of them are maybe like a year or two age over them. They, they're in high school, but do you have the ability to to have the respect for the leader on your team? Because that's something you're going to be doing on Friday nights. There's going to be a leader on that group, right? right, out there on the field. Coach can't say it all, but on that field, somebody got to get them fired up. Somebody got to get them in play. Or you're right. going to say, man, you my same age. I ain't listening to you, right? right? Right. So learning those things early, so that's the reason why. And, and actually, it wasn't me that came up with soldiers, right? I was trying to let the kids come up with their own thing. But one of my athletes was like, Coach, you know, you military. Why don't you just cop soldiers? Yeah. And so I was like, cool. And his dad was Air Force. I was like, okay, call, call them soldiers then. You know what I right, mean? You could have right. called them airmen. You know what I right, mean? Right, yeah. So, uh, but that wouldn't have been no, 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 no cool name, you know right, what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. So, but, uh, it's got to have something with some bike. Got to have some little bike, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Bike too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, no offense to the Air Force, but my, yeah. my older son in the Air Force, yeah. but the soldiers sound a little bit better. Yeah, you know absolutely. What I mean? Yeah. But yeah. So that's that's the reason, uh, and that's kind of the base of what we want to operate. And I'm looking forward to, um, what what it goes from here, right? Now that it started, where does it go from here? Because I see. These kids are really, really motivated on the things they're doing uh, and how they operate. And so now getting it within that group and then building. And they're talking to their other buddies. They're like, man, hey, next year we're going to do this, 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 that. And a lot of them are still going to come back to that 14 group because they're so young. Right. right. And then some of them, we might go up to the 15 group. Absolutely. Right. But I want to always be a part of that transition period. That transition time frame is that middle school group. Mm-hmm. So I always want to kind of f- find a way to be able to you know, stress, spread my wings within that realm mm-hmm. because that's when they trying to figure it out, right? right? They gonna be in 10th, 11th grade or grown, but they always gonna remember, you always remember our grade school, our middle school, Absolutely. you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. And so, cause that's that part that somebody said, man, look. That's that building block. I believe in you, right. yeah, I believe in you. I need you to believe in yourself, right? right. So that's where we at, that's, that's so I, it puts a smile on my face cause I can see just by looking at those kids and what's, what's happened within the last month, Right, and what's it doing internally, even in the classrooms, right? Right. They holding each other accountable, call them go to school together. Right. Right. They holding it, they just did the star test this yesterday, right? Mm-hmm. So those things like that where hey, I'm, I'm, I'm tell your coach. Hey. We're gonna we're gonna run. We got, you know what I'm saying? Right. Even as far, the fact of getting your parents to get you there on time. Because right. we you don't just individually suffer if you don't get there on time. The whole team suffers. Right. Right. And I tell them, I can't ask nothing of you on Saturday or Sunday. Right, just like in in real time, you can't ask none of you on Friday if you don't put the work in on the Friday. That's the easy part. Right, right. That's that's the, but the the challenge is everything in between. Right, you know what I'm saying? What do you do in between? What do you do on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Thursday? Preparation. You get Friday is the easy. Yeah, it's just time to execute. Right, you know what I'm saying? Right. When we when we went to battle, I went to Afghanistan. It wasn't. We can't wait to get there to prepare. We prepared before. Yeah, all that prep work was done before. So when we got got down to where we got to, um, it's time to execute. Right. So so that's the thing, man. So just trying to pull those same things that I learned and went through throughout the years, yeah. and push those out to uh, whether it's the coaches we deal with or the student athletes or the young people, or whatever you know. Absolutely, and I think an important piece of what you said. Uh, Coach Jay, and this is something that we talk about all the time, uh, you know, get, getting these athletes identified early. It was important, and I'll, I'll take a page, out of, you know, from a parent's perspective in my book. It was important, uh, you know, when my oldest son got to the sixth and seventh grade, okay, we need to f- figure out where we're going with this, you know, and that's the reason I became heavy and started to study Twitter like that. That was where I was able to find out, uh, you know, where the camps were going, what college camps are going on, instant information. But the earlier you start with this, you know, Coach Jay, this is how 
the things are rolling now. And, and we can talk about recruiting. It's how it gets started very early now. Now you're seeing uh, kids, you know, even in baseball, you know, pitchers, uh, big hitters, they're getting these offers or getting looked at in the seventh and eighth grade now. Yeah. Early identification is key. How do you uh, get that uh, through to parents uh, and players at an early age, Coach Jay, because you do this all the time with your consulting. Uh, you know, the Recruiting 101 the blueprint is out now. That's the key. You speak about this in the book as well. Speak about that, uh, how you try to get that across, because sometimes if you wait too late, you know, you can't wait till he or she's a senior and think, oh, I need to get this done now. You mm -hmm. have to start early. Mm -hmm. You know, Coach Jay, speak about that. Now it's even even way more important to, to, to understand how this works because just the, the timeline of how recruiting works, the, the earlier they can get eyes on you, it's not about 7th, 8th, ninth grade, about getting early offers. It is about being in position to have those relationships where they can offer you at the right time when it counts. You're not going for non-committable offers. You're supposed to be working to build relationships where you can get committable offers that's going to stick so your senior year you can walk to the table knowing that I'm good, that I have whatever it is that I'm going to get. Not all offers are the same, but the earlier I can start that process of putting my kid in position to be seen, the better because there's so much movement in college football, what you see early, if you have a relationship early and you build it, those coaches are going to follow you and know, hey, I have a relationship. This is what it's all about. College sports is relationship-based. And the better relationship you have, the longer you have, the more they're going to say, I'm willing to risk it for this kid because I've built a relationship over the past six months or two years or three years versus the kid I just met. So the earlier you can start that, the better. And it, it actually helps to get started. But, again, there has to be a process. There has to be, you know, if I'm 7th, 8th grade and I'm, you know, average ability, I don't want to go to a, a college camp where there are high school kids. That's not going to do me any good. I want to go to a college camp for middle school kids to where, again, I can build a relationship. I can meet the coaches. They can know my face. And then as I grow, they see my improvement. So it's just knowing how to do it, when to do it. But if you're a sophomore, junior, you know, I just had the conversation this morning with, with a parent. Son is going to her senior year. And I said, well, you know, tell me your, your, your camp uh, schedule. And it was all Texas schools, all group of five, all uh, uh, P4 schools. And I'm like, you know, that, that, that may not work out on, in your favor because – your son has no offers right now going to those schools at the end of his junior year to camp probably is going to backfire. So you, you might want to focus on, you know, D2s, D3s, NAIs, because those are the schools that offer more on the, the, the senior year versus, you know, P4s. They're going to be gone. They're not worried about this class once the summer hits. Right. They, they're going on to the class that's coming up next. Right. So, I uh, think parents don't understand how the recruiting cycle works and putting their kids, you know, in harm's way, and the kids don't understand how it works. So, they're just chasing stuff that aren't going to chase them and, and benefit them in the long term versus having a realistic look of this is where I am, this is where I should be, and let me go put myself in a position where I can at least play beyond high school absolutely and that's the big thing uh in today's recruiting world is 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 how do you get that done but uh you know we've if you've been listening to us since really at the end of state we've been talking about this these kind of things week to week uh check out the on your mark show youtube channel it's, it's full of information uh about these type of things for myself and coach jay and the guests that we've had We've been talking about this for a while. So, I mean, we're, we're kind of laying it out there for you. That's what we're here to do is to educate and elevate you each week right here on the On Your Mark show. Uh, Coach, give out the website before we get out of here where they can find you. Our uh, website is called b3athlete.com, b3athlete.com. 
Well, listen, we appreciate you hopping on today, man. You won't be you won't be a stranger. You'll probably see him again before the year is over. Yeah. We appreciate him tapping in. Of course, Coach Jay's on the road again. The On Your Mark Show, powered and sponsored by Epic Sports Apparel. Every play I compete right here every week on the Fishbowl Radio Network. And, again, follow the On Your Mark Show YouTube channel. It'll be up this episode later on today. We appreciate everybody for tapping in. Click, like, subscribe, share this episode to everybody that needs to be educated and elevate. We hit our mark today. Take us out, my guy Maynard Mike. Shout out to my guy Scott Rap for the visuals, man. We out. We'll see you next week. I'm not sure what you own, but this here is on the mark. Like a spiral from a five-star recruit, we throwing darts, really focused. WD-40 couldn't stop the way we grinded. Yeah. In the trenches, putting that work in, I relate to all my linemen. Uh. This is for the men, the boys do not belong here. Nah. Tiptoeing to the top, we doing cone oh, drills. Man. The hottest show in the world, you don't even got to search. Nah. Steady putting in work, you, you see, see the sweat up on my shirt. shirt. They wasn't aware of us at first, we wasn't on their radar. Now every play that we make, they gon' Say all oh, similar to a razor blade. We gon' stay sharp. The news ain't official if it's not on the mark.